Warning, this review contains minor spoilers for The Pawn by Stephen James. If you haven't seen the video reviewing that, I suggest you click here to watch it, or better yet, read the book for yourself. Special Agent Patrick Bowers is back in the second book of the Patrick Bowers Files by author Stephen James. This adventure takes place after the events of the first book and was published in 2008. We see the return of several characters such as Ralph, Patrick's buddy who's built like a linebacker, Leanne Hua, Patrick's love interest and often point of contention, and Tessa, his stepdaughter, who's dealing with PTSD after narrowly surviving the serial killer's grasp from the first book. And all these characters come together in a thrilling story of arson, murder, and conspiracy. Plot. Like in the pawn before it, the central crime isn't what it appears to be. Bowers and his team are sent in to investigate a series of arsons occurring seemingly at random in San Diego. There's no pattern to be found between the crimes, so the local PD is hoping that Bowers' particular brand of sleuthing can uncover the mastermind. The fires reach a critical point when a naval facility that trains Navy SEALs is attacked and something highly classified is stolen. Throw in an insider threat, and Bowers will have his hands full balancing the investigation, raising his daughter, and saving a kidnapped victim from the killer before it's too late. James said he came up with the idea for the plot by reading a book about sharks to his daughter, and on multiple times describes the ampullae of Lorenzini, an organ that basically gives sharks a sixth sense. There, that's your hint for later. It does work effectively enough, though James does have the tendency to hit the reader over the head with this particular point regularly. It does get a little old after a while. Main Character Bowers returns again as one of the more human characters I've encountered in fiction. He makes mistakes, assumptions, doesn't know how to talk to his teenage daughter, something I don't think anyone can effectively do, and still deals with all the aspects of his job, from catching the killer to dealing with office politics. It's really easy to enjoy Bowers as a protagonist as he uses his own form of crime solving, focusing on the geospatial aspects of a crime, the when and where, instead of just the how and why. That's Leanne Waugh's role. One of Bauer's biggest driving points, for me, is how he interacts with those around him. Sometimes he screws up and has to work things out, or sometimes he digs his heels in and stands his ground. It seems like such a minor point, but James uses it to flesh out his main character really effectively. The Killer There are actually multiple people involved in the central crime of the story, as introduced in the opening of the book. To make things easier, and to avoid spoilers, I'm just going to be talking about The Killer. He's a man named Creighton, and he's been recently released from prison when the book opens. In most ways, he's your typical creepy, evil type villain, watching in glee as a spider walks all over him. Now, it turns out later that he does have a reason for the fascination, and no, it's not because he particularly likes spiders. It leads to his most unique quality, which I won't reveal here due to spoilers, but it would explain why he has such a callous attitude towards life. Still, he's interesting enough to keep my attention. He's no illusionist, the villain from the pawn, but he's not bad. Tessa. While I like Bowers and Creighton, Tessa actually caused me to put the book down for about three months. She was annoying in the first book, but here, she's absolutely detestable, which is weird when you compare her to how Bowers was written. She has no reason to even be in this book since Bowers has to travel away for business and she could have stayed with his parents. Tessa has more knowledge and experience than any normal teenager really could, and James uses her to write himself out of a corner on several occasions, and that's when she isn't showing off. I've met Mensa geniuses who know less than she does. In her first chapter, Tessa and Bowers are eating dinner at a fancy restaurant as a bonding moment, but she criticizes Bowers for not knowing which fork is the salad fork and which is the dessert fork. She of course knows this because she spent two days working as a waitress in a fancy restaurant before she was fired. She's also a vegan, but she's not the type who will just leave you alone while you eat your burger. She's one of those internet joke vegans who will point out that an animal died for your food, you murderer. On top of that, she has the obnoxious teenage goth slash emo thing going on about how life is dark, man, you just don't understand me. She constantly rebels against Bowers, like getting her nose pierced or a tattoo without letting him know, which is actually illegal since she's 17, but then turns around and acts shocked when he doesn't trust her. I hated just about everything about her, and I'm kind of hoping she gets hit by a bus between now and the sequel. If I could, I would tell Tessa to shut the hell up, buy some clothes that don't have so much black on it, hug a puppy, and get over yourself, you self-righteous twit! Christian Themes This is really a smaller note, but I wanted to comment on it since the book is listed as a Christian thriller. It was a really minor point in the first book, but here it's so minor that I almost didn't catch it at all. James is trying to tie Bower's choices in with a morality lesson, but again, there's so little to it that I can't be sure. Rating 
Overall though, I still had fun reading this book. The characters, aside from Tessa, were enjoyable, the plot moved along at a nice clip, everything was written with enough technical expertise that I could believe everything written down, and much of the story has the same addictive qualities of the first. I'd say this book is pretty good. Not a bad time to be had, for sure. Pick it up if you like a decent thriller. So, have you read the book? What did you think? If not, do you want to read it now? Whatever your thoughts, comment below and stay tuned for more.